The title of this event includes the word education, clearly emphasizing the fact that a better educated society involves less social exclusion. What would you say about this? What's the role? Well, education is vitally important for Europe in general in any case because we cannot hope to compete with um, countries that have, uh, or regions indeed, that have cheaper labour uh, costs than Europe. Our comparative advantage is in a highly educated workforce. So education in general is very important for Europe. Education, as we've been hearing over the past two days, is very important in the context of social exclusion because education or proper education, inclusive education, can help to prevent people from moving over the edge, from moving into exclusion in one way or another, whether it's poverty, uh, dropping out from school, whatever it is. We've been hearing about all of this. It's a very rich topic, obviously. But education, and as Professor Zamani told us this morning, not just any education, but properly targeted education is crucial if we are to help those who are at risk of being excluded. In last night's session, former European Commissioner and currently the Greek uh, member, uh, the Greek Minister for, for Education, Anna Diamanatopoulou, asked one very important question, and that was what is the cost for Europe of there not being a social policy? What do you think? It is indeed an excellent question, and indeed it's not just what is the cost of not having a national social policy or national social policies, but what is the cost of not having a European social policy? In effect, what we're seeing in the crisis period that we're living through at the moment are some of the consequences of having an internal market, which is a strength of the European Union. What we need to balance that strength, though, particularly in terms of crisis, is counterbalancing measures that can help, as we have been learning over the two days of this conference, to stop people from being excluded in one way or another. So a social policy is absolutely crucial, vital. It's all, always been part of the overall vision of the European Union. It's of crucial importance at the moment. And what is the cost? Well, I think Anna Diamantopolo also spoke about the risk of social unrest, about the risk of a lack of social cohesion, even, as we heard from Professor Zemanyi this morning, of a democracy itself being undermined if social cohesion is not as strong as it should be in the European Union. Now, bearing this in mind, there's going to be some recommendations that come out of this event. Are you hopeful that they would be implemented, say, at a local region, at a local uh, level or a regional level or a national or perhaps EU level? What are, your, what are your thoughts on that? Well, I certainly hope that they will be heard at all of those levels that you've mentioned. As you know, President Barroso himself will be here tomorrow, and I'm sure that he will listen with great interest to the conclusions of the conference. We've also, of course, been dealing uh, with the local authorities, in particular with the region of Tuscany and the local Comune, and we heard from speakers, representatives, the Vice President of both of those organizations yesterday so we know that we will get the message across to them and indeed we know that they've already got the message because they were telling us how timely this conference was how timely the theme was and how much they were listening and how attentive attentively they were listening we also had a representative or rather we had two representatives of the European Parliament and they too were explaining to us that this really is a timely theme that the recommendations that come out of this conference which as you've seen is a conference that brings together really representatives of institutions institutions, regions, local authorities, but also stakeholders, so it's really the broadest possible participation. Um, they made it plain to us that they are looking forward to hearing these recommendations and they hope to be able to take them forward. Indeed, in the press conference that I chaired at the beginning of the conference yesterday, there was a question from a Spanish journalist precisely along, the, along those lines. What are you going to do with your conclusions? Well, the answer of our President Mario Seppi was we are already doing a lot, but we hope to do more by making sure that the voice of civil society is loudly and clearly heard both in Brussels and at the national, local and regional level. Martin Westlake, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.